Hello, and welcome back to EE for Everyone. Today we're going to talk about my take on a way to create a keypad using resistors and tactile switches. This design is used on the control board we'll be talking about in a future video. This will be a part of our plant light project series. Check out that playlist if you like electronics projects. There isn't anything super groundbreaking about this design that we're going to work on today, but there are a few things that I want to mention. On the screen, you will see an image of the schematic for a four button keypad, at least the keypad that I created. It consists of a capacitor, four switches, and five resistors. A voltage is applied to the top of the resistor divider, and from that 5 volt input voltage, we create 3.75, 2.5, and 1.25 volts. One switch connects each of those voltages to the input of the microcontroller. It's as simple as that. As long as the voltage source feeding the keypad is the same as what's feeding the analog reference voltage, this should always read as 25, 50, 75, and 100% of the maximum analog reference voltage within the tolerance of our resistors. In reality, the schematic gets a little more complicated. Instead of connecting directly to the analog input, a small capacitor was added with a 1 mega ohm resistor to discharge that capacitor. This serves an, as an RC low pass filter with the 5 kilo ohms being the resistor in that low pass filter. This will prevent tiny quantities of energy in the environment around this board from changing that input voltage at the microcontroller too much. High impedance inputs are susceptible to this type of radiation. The exception to this rule is the 5 volt switch, where the capacitor will be charged almost instantly when it's shorted to the 5 volt rail. I intended to do some software debouncing on top of the hardware debouncing, so this really won't be an issue, the fact that we don't always have the low pass filter, but if I were to do it again, I would probably add another 5K resistor just to always have that low pass filter. It's critical that the capacitor discharge resistor is large enough that it won't significantly impact the resistor divider creating the voltages of interest, but discharge the capacitor fast enough to prevent false positives as the capacitor's discharging and going through other potentially valid voltage potentials. In software, we simply measure the voltage of this analog input to determine which switch is being pressed. Four buttons on one pin. Great. In fact, we could have many more buttons on one pin if we took care to have precision resistors and needed that many buttons. Great. What happens if we press more than one button at a time, though? Since that would sort of short out two of our reference voltages. Uh, well, it depends on which two buttons. If you press the button connected to 5 volts and another button, the 5 volt button will win since it can drive with a much larger current than anything coming through a 5K resistor. It'll simply overpower the other buttons. Therefore, it's critical that there's always one resistor added from the buttons to ground such that the voltage rail can't be completely shorted from the reference voltage to ground. If this were the case, having all the buttons be pressed at the same time could damage the regulator, switches, or both. So four switches is done. What if we hold two adjacent buttons? That would effectively short out one of the resistors, changing the resistor divider to being three resistors of equal value. This would achieve voltage levels of 5 volts, 3.3 volts, and 1.7 volts. Either 3.3 or 1.7 would be passed to the microcontroller, and it's important that we tell the microcontroller to ignore this voltage level or handle it accordingly if we want to respond correctly to those key combinations. It's also possible to create a voltage level of 2.5 volts by pressing two different buttons at the same time that short out two of the resistors. Since this is a normal voltage level for the circuit, it'll be interpreted like a normal button press. A slight modification to this design that would prevent this scenario would be to have one resistor to ground and four different pull-up resistor values to each switch. So it'd be possible to select values where pressing any combination of buttons would be detectable based on the voltage level at the output. However, that would require using more unique resistor values, which would slow me down during assembly, and I only need one button to be pressed at a time to achieve my function. So I'll keep the simplicity and reduce my bill of materials line item count by keeping the design the way it is. I hope that made some sense, but how does the microcontroller measure a voltage? Well, really, it doesn't. Kind of. 
the microcontroller isn't really measuring an absolute voltage, it's measuring a voltage relative to its voltage reference. In this case, 100% of the reference voltage is a value of 1024, and 0% is 0. Since AVCC, or the analog input voltage for this microcontroller, and the resistive keypad are tied to the same voltage regulator, this circuit will not be affected by changes in that reference voltage. What I mean to say is if the digital system is running at 4.5 volts instead of 5 volts, it won't affect the digital threshold values set for any of the key switches since the microcontroller won't be able to tell the difference. This resistor divider divides voltage with respect to its input voltage the same way that the voltage reference is the reference for the digital system. Hopefully that makes sense. This error in the voltage is naturally compensated for by the measurement circuitry due to the architecture of this design. That may not always be the case if both systems are operating on different supply voltages or at different analog reference voltages. Man, this is a pretty short video. Either I'm getting better at explaining things or you're getting better at listening. Considering what I know about me and what I know about you, I'd say that you're probably getting better at listening. Let's head over to the workbench and measure the voltages we've been talking so much about. Uh, looks like we are filming. Hope you can see everything all right. This, I have the Plant Light Project control board with some modified firmware that's outputting the voltage at the ADC pin, assuming that the voltage reference is 5 volts. To demonstrate my point about the ADC not really knowing what the voltage is, and get the multimeter here hooked up with uh, the negative probe alligator clip going to ground, and then we can probe around at the other one. Makes it a little easier when I'm filming, uh, not have to worry about the board moving around as much. So really we're gonna run through, measure all the voltages. Um, first I'll do most of the measurements, just based off of what the display is telling me. On the top row it's displaying the voltage, and then the third row is showing me what key it thinks is pressed. So. Remembering what I said before, we should be able to achieve 5, 3.75, 3.3, 2.5, 1.7, and 1.25 volts on the display of the screen. Uh, assuming that I was correct, I might have an extra in there, extra one in there. When I was doing my calculations, I was calculating, um, I was calculating the theoretically possible voltage levels of the resistor divider and not necessarily which ones will be on the output pin of the resistor divider. But I think think we should be able to see all of those voltages. So the DMM and the, uh, the measured voltage with respect to the voltage reference, let's walk through starting with one button at a time measurements. So push up, measures 5.01 volts, right, measures 3.75, down measures 1.24, left measures 1.48. Now, the amazing thing about this is, here, let me try to get this up closer to the camera and uh, get it to focus on that display. It looks like it's flashing due to um, optimizations for, uh, it, it doesn't matter. It's not flickering in real life. Looks like it's flickering. It's from the display refreshing. So when I show 5.01 volts on this voltage reference and release, you can see that the keypad library that I wrote instantly recognizes that you've released the button. And it doesn't show the other keys as that voltage is dropping. And you can really, there's no fancy software going on there you are watching that voltage discharge in real time as measured by the microcontroller. You can see that happens at all voltage references, or all voltages from the resistor divider. The enter key is on a separate digital input like we've talked about before. The library can measure that, um, but it doesn't show up on the ADC pin, so it doesn't show up here. Pretty cool. 
All right, so that's what I want to show you there. You can't see it too well when it's down on the bench. Okay, so, oh, right, what about two at a time? I'll, I'll bring this back up by the, uh, by the camera to show you two at a time. Come on. Come on, focus. There we go. All right, so we'll do up and right, five volts, up and down, five volts, up and left, five volts, right and left, 3.3 and ignored by the library, up and down, 1.65 and ignored, down and right, 2.5 volts, and measures as left because that's the same voltage as we talked about before. Okay, what about three buttons? Left, right, and down, again, measures 2.5, measures as left, and every other combination, since it has to include the five volt pin, will measure as five volts, or up. Four at a time, measures as five volts, or up. Okay, we've walked through all the buttons, Let's hook up the DMM and look at the difference. Measuring VCC first, supply voltage measures as 4.86 volts. Not sure if you can, oh, the camera is out of focus. There we go, okay. So the supply voltage measures as 4.86 volts. Does the light help? Uh, marginally. Yeah, so if we probe the pin where all the buttons are connected, pushing down measures 1.24 volts on the display, so one and a quarter, and on the DMM measures 1.2. Measures five volts when we press up, but 4.87, or VCC, on the DMM. So this brings up an important point about reality versus like software interpretation. Here we are measuring voltages as 4.8 volts on the microcontroller, or sorry, measure 5 volts on the microcontroller, but 4.8 volts in reality. So is this considered correct or incorrect? The way that we would want to measure a voltage like this, if we were trying to measure voltage, would be to have a voltage reference that is known, an absolute, no matter what the supply voltage is, this voltage reference is like 3.3 or 5 or, you know, some set voltage. But that's not really what we're trying to do. We're using percentage of VCC as a way to measure the keypad button, which button is pressed. So it doesn't really matter if the voltage we're measuring isn't really the voltage applied at the pin. The point isn't to measure voltage, the point is to measure which button is pressed. There are things that we could do to actually make both be true. We are measuring a known voltage and also determining which button was pressed, but in this case we don't need both, and so having a simpler circuit that achieves the function just as well is there's no compromise here. It is more simple and it still works. Uh, that was a little bit, little bit rambling, but I think you understand what I was trying to say. I think I was right. Phew, I was getting nervous. Good thing I was right. If I were wrong, I would have needed to refilm this whole episode and you probably wouldn't have known the difference. It's nice to get one right every once in a while. It takes a keen eye to notice the soul-crushing defeat on my face during a fourth filming and hearing myself say the same thing. There was this one time when I heard that Insanity was doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Please subscribe. There was this other time that I heard that Insanity was doing the same thing over again and expecting a different result. Please subscribe. 
I hope that you enjoyed this video about the resistive keypad design that we implemented on the control board. I've used it many times before and have had no issues with it, as long as only one button at a time is required. There are many ways to multiplex buttons, but there is something about this specific design that I really like. If you think this video is great, please let me know by hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and leaving me a comment telling me what you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!